Welcome back for some more Yamaha WR250R content. This will be under the adventure banner of my channel. This journey is broken into two parts and will be titled Continental Divide Adjacent. I've decided on my videos that I'm no, no longer going to be including footage of the to and from and trying to tell stories there. I'm just going to assume that you guys know what's going on and just try to tell a story relevant. Kind of like uh, not retelling Spider-Man's uh, death of Uncle Ben 12 million times. It doesn't seem relevant anymore. With that out of the way, this trip begins in Nordeg, Alberta, to the center west of the province, right up against the British Columbia border. Um, the hill we're climbing here is Old Body, which is directly north of Nordeg. You can um, get there right from in town. Uh, the town itself is set up quite well for ATV and dirt bikes, so it's uh, mapped out pretty, pretty well for you. I've got the audio turned down a little bit more on this uh, for the bike noises as I had some stuff that was rattling I didn't have tightened down as well as I should have and the camera was picking it up incredibly loudly. But you'll hear my little engine singing quite a bit, the altitude being uh, as high as it is, we're running a little bit low on oxygen and I am not in my enduro configuration here, I am fully loaded for camping. And uh, because we're testing gear, um, I'm not actually sure how much we would have had, but I probably had 60 pounds of gear. I'm about 230 pounds, and I had all of my riding gear on and then 10 liters of fuel uh, strapped to the bike along with all of that. So we're looking probably 320 pounds on top of the on top of the weight of the bike. So that is super heavy loaded and super heavy or super high altitude to be pushing these little 250s. But uh, it doesn't seem to mind it. I mean, it revs out, but... Uh, it's got plenty of power to get up there as long as you don't mind sitting higher in the RPM. Now the view at the top of this mountain is incredible. Um, obviously you can see in the background here that there's a bunch of communications tower, but there's also a fire watch station as you can see directly ahead to my left there. And I'll climb off the bike here. Uh, obviously pretty excited we made it all the way to the top. I've been turned back a couple of times for snow, so I'm always excited to get there. But the view is just incredible, uh, particularly off to the west. The east isn't as bad, but uh, seeing the Rockies in the distance is amazing. Now, for whatever reason, on the way down, it always seems to look better than on the way up. I don't know if it's the, the speed difference or just that you're standing up a little bit better and the bike's not obscuring the view. That windshield's been a little bit of the bane of my existence this summer with the filming. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to get my camera configuration a little bit better. I do really like the chest mount for a variety of reasons, but uh, with the fairing in particular, it ends up... Anytime you're going up a hill, it chops out so much of the video, so it, it's hard to get good footage, but it also gives you a much more realistic view so uh, we'll play around a little bit more next summer try some new ideas but um, for now it seems to work all right now circling back to the title of this video um, i see in a lot of adventure bike videos that they they ride the continental divide and for the life of me i never really understood what it was i had a general idea of where it was and that there were um, several divide lines although i wasn't exactly sure which one this this was, as it turns out, uh, slightly to the west of here, which is about one mountain range in, is the Great Continental Divide. It's where the watershed goes to one ocean or the other. And in this case, there's also the Arctic watershed that starts from around this area, slightly to the north of Nordig, where the watershed uh, ends up going north instead of east-west. Now, I'm trying to go back through my memory banks here and remember where exactly we came in on uh, Highway 734. I believe we went down to Rocky Mountain House and then um, took a gravel road kind of the southwest of the town and connected into 734, maybe 100 kilometers south from Nordig, and then rode in on 734, which is this road. Uh, this area is beautiful. I love the, the, winding, the winding road. It's relaxing. You kind of get into a nice rhythm. Um, it's hilly, but you're not right in the Rockies. There's a lot more of that footage in the second half of this video when we start getting significantly north from Nordig up towards Hinton and Kataman. But um, as far as relaxing road, man, if the conditions in this area are good as far as rain and um, rain and mud go, it's just a it's just mesmerizing ride. Uh, everything's smooth, um, continuous hills. There's no straight line other than probably the length of this bridge for several hundred kilometers um, so much random camping available along the sides on rivers and and lakes it's just beautiful now for the alberta familiar this little section here is gonna stand out like a sore thumb that's a little bit of a cheater footage this is from one of our last or the last day of our trip but i wanted to include it in this section because it's somewhat just on theme with what we're going through here 
this big rock lake, which is actually just north of Hinton, it's not uh, down near Nordeg, but um, it's kind of similar uh, similar terrain in the riding. We're not quite into the Rockies in this section, we're more in the foothills, but it's a, it's a good indicator of what a lot of the lakes in the area look like. Um, there is just so much to look at here. Um, we spent a lot of time kind of shooting around and checking out a few of the first lakes, but really stuck mostly to arteries, uh, the major arteries in 734 to, to kind of map out exactly where we wanted to go in the next couple of years. Here we are, we circled back to the Nordeg area. It's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 kilometers to the west of Nordeg. It's a, the Bighorn Park, which I believe is a public land use zone, and it may also be a provincial park. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, there's some random camp in this zone and actually a OHV only park uh, for riding in that's it's quite nice. I have a video out but that came up earlier in the year and then we'll have another one coming out shortly with uh, riding with my daughter in the area. We do camp in this uh, open zone here, which is a random camp. Uh, it's probably the most organized random camp that I've ever been in. Uh, it's pretty busy there. We were there on the August long weekend and again in September but uh, it has a significant amount of amenities and that's a little surprising given that it's not really a developed campground but i want to thank you for coming along on this i've got a my next video coming out in about a week which will feature more of the rocky mountain and area near cadman which i'm not really sure how to explain and the cardinal river road um, it just didn't seem to fit very well with this video so i wanted to break them up into two different sets and uh, see if we could stay on theme with those but uh, I think that this gave a pretty good indication of some of the things near Nordeg and um, I highly recommend heading out to this area if you have any questions or, or just need some directions uh, fire me some comments and I will do my best to give you some direction yeah.